All right, so that's it for, for um, examples of, of different types of visualizations. So I uh, kind of want to go through some, some do's and don'ts here. Um, if you're making an interactive visualization, um, there's no reason it should be like a static picture. Users should be able to explore the data because this thing is interactive. You want them to be able to get something out of it. Um, there's a, a mantra that, that Ben Schneiderman uh, likes to, to give out. It's based on his experiences building uh, data visualization applications. And that is, uh, allow your users to have an overview of the data set first. Um, give them the ability to zoom in and filter out data that they're not interested in. And then let them dig into the details. Um, and this is something I've seen in, in developing applications for the lab uh, as well. If you, you know, show everyone a table that has all the entries in your, your database, they're going to ignore that table because no one wants to look at the table. But if you show them a you know, high-level map and let them zoom in on the areas that are standing out because you rendered it as a heat map and they can see those high, higher locations versus lower locations, um, then they're going to have an easier time exploring the data set. Uh, so that's for interactive visualizations. Uh, these next uh, four points are for any visualization at all. And they seem somewhat obvious, but people forget to do them. I know I forgot to do them in, in some of these examples. I clipped the titles and I clipped access labels and things. Um, but anyway, you should do it. Um, provide context for your visualization. I have a couple slides about explaining what, what context really is. And then provide information so that people know what your visualization is without you having to do that and explain it. Title them, label your activity, provide legends. Things you want to avoid. Um, 3D when it's not useful. Um, I think 3D is um, it's useful for certain things, but for data, data visualization, I, I generally don't see the use. Um, because it's that pre-attentive processing that you want users to be able to uh, work with uh, to, to extract information. Um, and if you give a user a game controller and they have them fly around this world, they're not experiencing that data in that way. They are they're flying around the world. Um, if you can translate that 3D image into a 2D one, um, regardless of how you do it, that, that might be a, a better solution. Um, there have been numerous studies on, on access label rotation, whether or not that's a good thing or not. Um, and the general consensus is if you go, I think, above a 30% uh, grade for access, for, for labeling, uh, rotating text, uh, it, it becomes very difficult to read and slow down the user. So, um, yeah, avoid doing it. There's a, a decent solution for it in, in bar charts, at least. If you have um, your x axis is becoming cram, um, and you start to find that you either have to drop labels, which is acceptable, or rotate them, what you can always do is just flip the axis so that those, the bars are left and right. You're not going to lose any meaning that way, and you can have the, the labels. Um, left in a horizontal fashion on that axis. Uh, I have a uh, note on here about uh, not using flashing colors. I wish I knew color theory a lot better. I don't, I don't really know much about it. Um, there are numerous websites that you go to that will generate color themes for those of us who just don't have the skills. Um, you want to make sure you choose the colors that, that work for users. Um, we once had a colored light student working in our lab, working on our product. And he chose all kinds of crazy reds and greens, uh, all sorts of different shades in a particular product he was working on. And we asked him about it, like, why you're mapping the, the same information here? Why do you choose different color? You don't really want to do that. He's like, I didn't. It's all brown. Like, OK, you don't get to pick the color schemes anymore. <laughs> I'm colorblind. OK, then you really don't get to pick the color schemes anymore. Um, and, and this can be tempting. I've seen this before, using all of the options that are available to you in the, the software that you're using. Um, I'm going to jump out of, of this for a second. So you know, I can create a new chart here. And they give me a lot of different options for what kind of chart I want to use. Um, and there's very little difference between a lot of them. Um, column chart, it looks like it has 15 different options here. But um, there's grouping them, there's stacking them. And that's really all you can do with column charts. The rest of these are just, OK, is it going to be in 3D? Are they going to be squared? Are they going to be cylinders? Are they going to be cones? None of these are going to help your understanding. Um, so just because the cones look cool, um, that doesn't really mean that you're going to make your data have more of an impact if you use it. Um, it's 
probably going to be more understandable if you're just rendering it as flat 2D bars. Um, so that's where the, uh, the word art came from here. Uh, okay, so provide the context. Um, this is a, a graphic that, um, I don't know how old this is, um, but it was passed around a lot after um, all the, the disasters that happened back to back in, in Japan um, back in March. Um, so this was after the, uh, there were worries about radiation. Um, there was all this uh, media hubbub about, you know, the radiation is so extreme that, you know, everyone in Japan is going to die and it's going to reach over to the U.S. and we're going to be poisoned and whatnot. Um, so there's a really big misconception about how, um, how intense these, uh, the radiation being emitted from, from the, the failing power plant was. Um, and so this graphic, um, I like what they did with the making it as cartoony as possible. This is a very serious topic, um, and the graphic is meant to allay fears. So making people you know, smiling as they're on a plane, or smiling as they're you know, having their x-rays taken, that, that kind of alleviates that somewhat, so that's nice. Um, so I forget where the actual um, radiation being emitted from that plant actually fell in here, but it was nowhere near um, anything up, up at the top there. Um, so if this is something, if, if you're plotting something that's unfamiliar to your audience, um, you know, maybe you're working in a field where um, radiation is something that you commonly use, you don't need to explain it this way, um, but if you're explaining to the general public, then uh, definitely want to provide the, the kind of context that relates the data to something familiar. It's the same as the visual mapping of relating data to uh, meaningful things in life, except this is relating an access to meaningful things. All right, so this is uh, more about context. So, got a sample graphic here. Um, two data points, not a lot going on. Uh, access before and after a construction project. Um, so as soon as the construction project completed in 2002, we got two data points here that represent the total number of accidents that happened at this location. And the assertion would be here that this is uh, web browser usage statistics over a period of uh, seven years, January to August uh, 2002, 2009. Um, the idea is uh, each ring represents a different uh, sampling period, so a couple of, I believe each one is divided into months there. Um, and the size of each wedge represents uh, how much of each browser was used. Um, just like we've take, taken a, a, what, a stacked bar chart and kind of wrapped it around. Um, what do you guys think of it? Were there really that many Firefox users? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, were there? How many are there? Can you show some uh, part numbers? Yes, yeah, so this is actually interactive. I just have the screenshot here. Um, but you roll over it and they, uh, the highlight. Yes, yeah, that's, that's one way to improve it. Actually, show the number like the uh, show percentages show actual value as well. Anyone else have anything? From back here, I'm not Exactly. It's a terrible, terrible visualization. So the background here is um, this is when I was working on Access, and the whole premise of Access was you know to create custom visualizations real quick. So I wanted to write this article, create a custom visualization on the internet would bug, and it would get viral, and everyone would start using it, and it would be really popular. Um, so I sat down, parsed this data. Um, and started putting this visualization together, and I rendered it like this with these colors, and it looked like Firefox. And I was like, the internet is going to love this, because that's a web browser, and this is about web browsers. And that's where I stopped. Um, this is it's a bad visualization. You can't tell what the meaning is supposed to be. Um, problem is, it basically pie charts, which I said are terrible, layered on top of one another. Um, you have, it's very easy to tell the performance of IE, because IE is aligned for this uh, line here, so you can see, uh, okay, well, from here to here, the uh, market size for that browser went down, and from here to here, it went down even more. Um, but then looking at Firefox, as you said, are there really that many users? Um, it's hard to tell because Firefox, the baseline for Firefox, starts um, where IE ends, um, and then it ends however much later. 
So you can actually compare the lengths of the individual uh, browser penetration rates beyond Internet Explorer um, because they don't start and end at the same place. 